at your excellency's request, I applied for special leave from the bureau in order to make an investigation in your state. My notes contain all the essential facts, but my injuries make this transcription into a presentable manuscript painfully slow. When finally completed, I will submit the following as a full report on parole conditions which resulted in the release of dangerous criminals who at once returned to their lives of crime. Mallinson? I'm glad you got here, Mr. Hendricks. Nobody saw you, I hope. I don't believe so, sir. Good. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Richard Hendricks, our host, the state's attorney general, Mr. Whitmore. It's a pleasure, sir. Glad to meet you, Mr. Hendricks. My name is Hughes. Mr. Hughes? Our commissioner of Metropolitan Police. Won't you sit over here, Mr. Hendricks? Thank you. Let me take your hand. What can I get you? Oh, a little ginger ale, if you please. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Hendricks, all this secrecy may seem a little ridiculous to you, you realize, of course, your identity must not go beyond the three of us in this room. It's only fair to warn you that our two previous investigators fared rather badly. We found one of them with enough lead in him to start a pipe factory. The other uh, simply disappeared. Thanks for warning me. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Well, gentlemen, I left Washington in such a hurry that I wasn't given a very complete briefing on your particular problem. But offhand, I would say the trouble is in your parole board. During the past six months, prisoners of such low character have been paroled. I now suspect criminal conspiracy. Well, do you appoint the parole board, Governor? Yes, I do. Why not replace them? You see, uh, those appointments are made for a period of six years. And nobody, not even the governor himself, can remove a board member for any reason other than proven malfeasance of office. I see. That kind of ties things up, doesn't it? Well, gentlemen, I, I've been figuring how to go about this investigation. Well, forgive me for pacing, Governor. I think better this way. As I say, I've been figuring how to go about this investigation, and I've come to the conclusion that I must pose as a parole violator. Oh, incidentally, does the name Richard Murdoch sound familiar to you? Richard Murdoch, uh, he was in that payroll stick-up. His last job was the Milberg Trust Company hold-up. Oh, yes, I remember now. Well, Murdoch was paroled, and then quietly skipped the country. So quietly, in fact, that not even the grapevine has the information as yet. And you propose to assume the identity of Murdoch? That's right. Only I'll call myself Rick Carson, since Murdoch naturally would be using an alias. Now, as Murdoch, alias Rick Carson, I must become friendly with someone who has been through the parole mill in order to find out how his parole was engineered. Have you anyone in mind? No, but it should be someone whose parole was obviously bought. I figured that if someone pays for a parole, someone must receive the money. While you're working undercover as uh, Richard Murdoch or... Um, Rick Carson. Uh, Carson. You will have to avoid any contact with the police, even in an emergency. Here's my private telephone number where you can reach me any time, day or night. Thank you. Metropolitan 6267. Metropolitan 6267. I'll remember it. 
Do, uh, do you have anyone coming up for parole who fits our special requirements? There uh, certainly is. Convict by the name of Harry Palmer. Uh -huh. And when is the next parole board meeting? Uh, let's see. Uh, next Tuesday at the state prison. Next Tuesday at the state prison. Let me see. You're now serving time for attempted murder, Palmer. Do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, it was a phony rap. A lot of things about my trial smelled plenty bad. So does your police record. Do you think you've learned your lesson during your time in prison? I sure have, ma'am. I found out that crime don't pay off. Besides, I realize the things I've done ain't fair to Glenda. She's my wife. If you are paroled, will you conscientiously try to live a clean and decent life? Sure. You can bank on that, Reverend. You think you can earn a living? Honestly, I mean. You bet. I am promised a job as chauffeur to Miss Dumont. She owns a pastime club. It's all my application there. If you give me this one more chance, I promise I'll never step off the straight and narrow again. Why, he isn't sincere. He's merely playing on our sympathies. All right, Palmer, you may return to your duties. You'll be notified by the warden of the action of this board. Thank you. And I feel in my heart that Palmer is sincere. The poor man has never had a fair chance to rebuild his ruined life. Therefore, for the wife's sake as well as his, I favor parole again. And what about you, Mr. Jones? It seems to me that keeping a man behind bars when he can earn a living is a needless waste of taxpayers' money. I vote for his parole. And uh, your decision, Reverend? As you well know, I usually bend over backwards to give the misguided unfortunates a chance. But in the case of Harry Palmer, my conscience compels me to oppose his parole. And your decision, Mr. Perkins? Palmer deliberately broke the law. Not once, but many times. Freeing a man like Palmer makes a travesty of justice. I am positively against paroling him. Well, it seems we're evenly divided. Two for and two against Palmer's parole. Consequently, as chairman of this board, it becomes my duty to cast a deciding vote. <clears throat> a decision like this must come from the heart as well as the mind. It must be tempered with humanity and understanding. I watched Palmer when he made his plea, and I'm convinced of his sincerity. In view of this, I must cast my vote with uh, Mrs. Prescott and Mr. Jones in favor of Palmer's parole. This is an outrage, Holiday. At least a half a dozen times in the past few months, you've done the same thing. I, I just don't understand. I'm entitled to my vote the same as you, Mr. Perkins. Now, Palmer will have served his minimum sentence on the 22nd of this month. His parole will become effective on that date. I learned that Palmer's wife, Glenda, was working as a waitress at the pastime club. So I decided to hang around. I'll delete that hang around. So I decided to drop around to the club to look the situation over. <laughs> Pastime Club proved to be a not too popular combination gin mill and cheap cafe. A hangout for a lot of undesirable characters. Can I take your order, sir? Can I make up my mind? I'm a little undecided between a hamburger and a ham sandwich. Take the ham sandwich. You got a deal. Coffee, too? Yes, black, please. Thank you. It's quite a place you got here. Do you own it? 
He must be new in town. I only work here. Jojo Dumont owns the place. Oh, well, then Mr. Dumont's got a nice place here. Miss Jojo Dumont. In fact, there she is now. I learned from Glenda that the owner of the place was Jojo Dumont, a woman of striking personality who had her own apartment in the club. One group of hangers-on seemed to be tied in with Jojo. It was difficult to find out how. They were quite bold about it. The tie-in was a lucrative sideline which Jojo operated, an illegal punch board racket. The three salesmen were Blackie Olson, Frank Mitchell, and Kid Redman. They sold to the cooperative customers who were always glad to make a dishonest dollar. Duke Vigili, another of Jojo's willing workers, spent most of his spare time trying to cheat a slot machine. During his working hours, he called on the less cooperative prospects. For these, he had three convincing arguments, two hard fists and a 45 caliber revolver. The straw boss of the outfit, Charlie Newton, dignified the job by calling himself manager. He tried to appear a legitimate businessman, but the only thing legitimate about Newton was a long police and prison record. Such were evidently the pals of Harry Palmer. They didn't trust me from the very first. However, during the two weeks until Palmer's parole, I managed to strike up a casual acquaintance. Never mind, it's being mm -hmm. I understand you been around a little, Carson. A little. Here and there. Stick around for a while? Maybe. All depends. On what? Maybe it depends on you, Newton. You run the joint. I thought you might have something in mind. Not a thing. Hey, boy. Besides, I'm only the manager. I don't own the place. Miss Dumont does all the hiring and firing. Uh-huh. Well, I guess I'll have to make it my business to get acquainted with Miss Dumont. Oh, that did it. Gin, that's three games. Never saw such luck. Ah, luck up. You play like a dope, kid. Am I right, Duke? He always plays like a dope. Yeah, he always can. Uh, 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 five more. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. I'll take you on, Carson. Okay, Mitchell, deal. What do you think of this mug, Carson? I haven't decided yet. Got something in your mind, Duke? Yeah, something very interesting. That'll keep. Kidding aside, though, I would like to make a connection. What kind? Oh, I'm not particular. I like the climate here. It's good for my health. What is your racket, Carson? Oh, anything that pays off. Hey, Frank. Yeah. Harry Palmer's back. Come to JoJo's apartment. I'll be right there. Keep the cars warm. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll stack the deck while you're gone. I'll bet you would. I would have given a lot to know what was going on in JoJo's room. I found out later from statements of various people concerned. It looks natural. Just like old times. Sure, right? it's like it's our eyes. Yeah. Feeling better, Glenda? Wonderful. Seems like a hundred years since I saw you, darling. Yeah, me too. That's what I've been waiting for. Frank will be here in a minute. Well, let's call for celebration. How about fixing some drinks, Blackie? Okay, Jojo. Sure, I like her. You look right in the fence there, kid. They treat you good up there? What's on your mind, Charlie? How long are you going to keep Palmer on as a chauffeur, Jojo? Are you kidding? <laughs> what do you think I got him out for? Chauffeurs are a dime a dozen. The other boys are all right fixing the boards. But Palmer's the best collector we ever had. As long as he keeps his nose clean. Hmm. The next time he gets in trouble pulling off side plays, I'll let him rot in the pen. Hiya, Harry. How goes it, Frank? Oh, great to see you, old son of a gun. Papa's home, huh, baby? How does it feel? Feels grand. Glenda's been in a tough spot, but she came through okay. Yeah, but it's a lucky thing you got the parole just now. What do you mean by that crack? Oh, nothing, but there's been a guy named Carson hanging around the past few weeks, and he's been making a play for us. That's not true, Harry. Duke's the one who's been on the make ever since you went away. 
Me make a play for you? Ah, you're crazy. That'll be enough, Duke. I haven't met this character Carson yet, but I can tell you one thing. Glenn has been absolutely on the up and up. I knew that, but thanks for telling me, Jojo. Cork pop, folks. Help yourselves. Thank Call you. the house. I mean on Jojo. Miss Bourbon? Uh-huh. Thanks, Mark. Right. Here's to you, sweetheart. Here's to us. What's Duke beefing about? He doesn't like Rick Carson. But I can truthfully say Carson never got fresher. Handed me a line. Forget it, sweetheart. Run along and change your dress. But hurry back. I won't be long. How do you feel, Harry? Pretty good. Hey, listen, Harry. I didn't mean any slur on Glenda, but... Forget you know, it, Duke. Well, I've been keeping my mouth shut because I haven't got proof yet. But as sure as I'm standing here, that guy Carson's either a copper or a story. I know every cop in the state. Well, he might be one of Jag or Hoover's boys. Carson's no more FBI than I am. It's all we need around here, a copper. Especially when business is just beginning to boom. He lives at the Colvin Hotel right down the street. Why don't we search his room? There must be something around to tip us off. I can get in. I know the night clerk. Sure. The kid in Blackie could investigate. Then we'd know exactly how things stand. JBI, that's me. JoJo's Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> This looks like the beginning of a second honeymoon. You like my new dress? Pretty sharp. Hope my husband will like it. Sure he will. Oh, here he is now. Honey, this is Rick Carson. Glad to see you, Palma. Brenda was telling me about you. I was telling Harry how polite you've been. That's a great deal more than I can say about most of the customers. Oh, thank you, Glenda. That's a real compliment. <laughs> see you around. Glad to, any time. Good luck to you both. How long will it take to search Carson's room? No, oh, it won't take over an hour. Only the clerk doesn't come on till 8 o'clock. Sometimes maybe a little later. Suppose I arrange to keep him occupied between 8 and 10. You haven't even met Carson. So, you'll introduce me. I think I can keep him interested for a couple of hours. Announced it. 20 minutes to 10. I think I'd better be going, Jojo, before I wear out my welcome. Oh, no, no, no. See, he's so young. Besides, I think you're swell. I think you're a wonderful guy. Really. If you think I'm swell, you ought to meet my pal Monty. There's a real guy for you. Oh, I bet he ain't half as nice as you. <laughs> What's his name? Monty. Monty Cooper. Oh, yeah, you said that. It's a nice name. Monty Cooper. Well, go ahead. Call him up, Tonda. Come on over. Oh, well, I couldn't do that. You see, Monty isn't in town. Oh, that's a shame. When's he coming back? Well, now, that all depends. Confidentially, Jojo, Monty's in prison. That's a shame. Poor Monty. Locked up in the pen. Yeah. Well, forget I said anything. I talk too much. Oh, you can trust Jojo, honey. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, uh, fix another drink. I'll be right back. Yeah. Hello? Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, I'm so glad to hear from you. How you been getting along? Now, listen, Jojo. We got the lowdown on that bird, Carson, and we're on our way back. You better get rid of him. Oh, oh, well, that's fine. I'll do that. Yeah. Goodbye, Mary. You don't have to be a G-man to know that that was Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, you were listening. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, I don't want any more tonight. Uh-huh. I can feel it coming. I'm about to be tossed out. You don't mind, do you? I'm beginning to get a terrific headache. I'll probably have one in the morning, too. Want an aspirin? No, thanks. Just my hat. Thank you. Other night, Jojo. 
It was a swell evening. I enjoyed it. <laughs> What'd you find out? Something very interesting. We got the dope on them, all right. Oh, good. That is interesting. Hi, Rick. Hello, oh, Rick. Hi. How you doing? How's everything? What's up, Duke? I don't know. Oh, hello, boys. Well, let's hear it. What's the dope on Carson? What do you think of that? His name ain't even Carson. Richard Murdoch. Age 32, date of birth, 1915, 16, Detroit, Michigan, as a dark brown. Occupation mechanic. Yeah, it had me puzzled for a minute or two. Then, then it came to me. This guy Murdoch and a pal of his, a fellow named Monty something. Monty brother. Cooper? Yeah, that's it, Monty Cooper. Well, anyway, Carson or Murdoch and his pal Cooper pulled that Milberg Trust Company holdup about a year and a half or so ago. Yeah, we found some newspaper clippings about that robbery. He had them hidden between the cushions of a chair. <laughs> he hadn't figured on your JVI. <laughs> Good for you. Well, I guess I was all wet about Carson being a copper or a story. Why don't you give up, Duke? You're always beefing about something. Okay, okay, but don't say I didn't warn you guys if something goes wrong. Now, get this picture. This is the Milberg Trust Company, a real old broken-down joint. There's the flight of stairs where we came up. This is the vault here, a real old-fashioned can. Those stairs made it a little tough because we had to back down them and we couldn't see who was coming up anyway. We come in here and there's all kinds of desks and places where you write out checks and so forth. There's quite a few people. Well, I heard them all over here in the corner. Keep them all together. Monty takes the cashier, forces them in over here, makes them open the vault. We open this little old-fashioned can, and what do you think we get? 50 Gs. We back out of the joint and make for the car. 50 Gs? Split two ways? Not bad. Mm -hmm. You see, Monty and I don't go in for big mobs. Hey, maybe you saw Monty up there. He was doing a heavy stretch. Yeah, I saw him almost every day. We talked to him a couple of times. But he didn't get overly friendly with anyone. Yeah, that's Monty, all right. Well, Harry, I'll tell you. I got another big job on tap. But I got to get Monty out of prison before I can pull it off. Mm, that's tough to do unless you know the ropes. Besides, it takes two grand. How do you know? I just know. Harry, I figure naturally you just getting out, you could kind of tell me how your parole was engineered. Now, I'm willing to cut you in for a third, and I'll pay all expenses. Yeah, I don't know. What's the matter? Ain't my dough as good as the next guy's? Oh, it ain't that, Rick. Look, I'll let you in on a little secret. Maybe you noticed the boys got kind of friendly the last couple of days. So? Well, they checked on you, and you're okay with most of them. But Duke's still holding out. He ain't satisfied you're on the up and up. Well, what's that got to do with me buying a parole through you? It's got a lot to do with it. JoJo's the first step, and unless she's sure of her ground, no dice. All right, so there's no dice with JoJo. And who's the next step? Now, wait a minute. Not so fast. I'm no squealer, Rick. Oh, but you do know who the higher-up is. Maybe. I ain't saying. <laughs> Harry, let me ask you another question. Who we'll put up the money for your parole? Why, Jojo put it up. It's the dealers aren't to pay her back. Oh, so she didn't put it up. She just advanced it to you. Yeah, that's right. But... Well, why cut in Jojo when you can easily go around her and pick up a couple of G's for yourself? All right, later on, if you want to cut her in, that's your business. You might have something there, Rick. At least it's worth it. Plunder's home. Don't say anything to Plunder. Hello, darling. Hi, baby. Um, well, I haven't tired. We had such a busy day at the club. Oh, Rick, you're not leaving. Yeah, I think I'd better be going. Why don't you stay for dinner? Won't be very fancy, but you're welcome. Yeah, why not, Rick? Maybe some other time. You run along and get some dinner started, Donnie. I'll come in and help you in a minute, huh? Okay. Sorry you won't stay, Rick. Mm. 
Can you get the two grand? Harry, whenever I need a few G's, I don't let anything stand in my way. Get the dough. I called the commissioner and told him I was all set to buy a parole for a pal of mine named Monty Cooper, but I had to have $2,000. He agreed. But as the boys were somewhat suspicious of me, and in order to gain their confidence, it ought to look like I had pulled a stick up. Go ahead, read it. Philanthropist. Philanthropist. Philan... Well, anyway, Rob. Bandit ignores jewels. Gets 2,000 cash. Neil Ingersoll, civic leader, was held up last night and relieved of $2,000 cash by a bandit who claimed he was not interested in jewels. Ingersoll, returning home at a late hour from an auction of antiques. Antiques. What's a dip? Which he had been attending stepped out of his car outside his garage to find himself looking into the muzzle of a gun. It must have been Carson. What makes you think so? I don't think I know. The word passed through the grapevine that I'd pull that job. And the boys who hung out around the pastime club immediately started to accept me as one of the boys, as it were. Well, I turned over $500 to Palmer and went with him to make the contact for Cooper's parole. When we reached the lobby of an office building, Palmer told me I couldn't go upstairs with him. This was disappointing. But I heard him tell the elevator operator to take him to the fifth floor. So I checked the names of all the tenants on that particular floor. There were over 20. Miss Dumont in her quarters. Yeah. The jerk. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Dodo. What's on your mind, darling? Seemed as cross as a bear when you phoned to say you were coming over. Somebody's talking too much around here. You mean me? I don't know whether it's you or Newton, but one of you is, and I don't like it. As a matter of fact, I won't stand for it. You've no reason to talk to me like this. I'm sorry, my dear. I don't mean to be discourteous, but I'm worried. For you as well as for myself. Just a little while ago, one of Newton's boys came over to my office and demanded that I get a parole for a fellow named Monty Cooper. Monty Cooper? That's the name he gave me, Monty Cooper. It's Carson or Murdoch, whatever his name is. He knows nothing about our parole arrangements. Who said anything about Carson or murder? The fellow who came to see me was Harry Palmer. He's double-crossing you, Jojo. I can't believe it. You can't, huh? Well, less than an hour ago, he laid $500 on my desk and gave me a long spiel about knowing that I was your lawyer and that you came to see me any time you wanted to get anybody out of the pen. Naturally, I told him that he got his numbers crossed and I knew absolutely nothing about buying a parole. Thank you. Did that shut him up? For the moment. But he left the money and suggested that I think it over. Well, anyway, here it is. Buy yourself that bracelet you've been talking so much about. Thanks. I don't know what to say, darling. I haven't mentioned our connections to a soul. Of course, the boys know that you do handle my legitimate legal matters, but... The important point is how Palmer or any one of them know about my connection with the parole board. It's dynamite. If one of them should talk out of term, there's no telling what might happen. You need to tell me. I'll talk to Charlie Newton about it. You throw a scare into Palmer, he won't forget. Four aces and two. Mm -hmm. 
Pilot Palmer just pulled a double cross on Jojo. Yeah? What'd he do? That's my business. Jojo says she doesn't want any rough stuff. But I am running the boys, not Jojo. Yeah, but Jojo just got Harry out. So what? You're just as good a collector as Harry ever was. Huh. I should say I am. You name it. We'll do it. Okay. Tell you what we'll do. I'll call Harry on the phone, tell him to call me back in the corner drugstore. When he rings up here, I'll tell him to skip it, that I changed my mind. Now, when he's walking back to his house... Hiya, Harry. Hi, Blackie. What's cooking? You'll find out. Killing of Palmer completely upset my plans, as I had now lost my only link to tie in Jojo with the higher-ups in the parole conspiracy. Well, how's the leg today? Oh, much better, thank you. Look. Take it easy. Okay. <laughs> ah, coffee lover. Oh, I see. Well, I'll come back for that later. All right, fine. Hunting around for... I'll delete that hunting around, make it fumbling about, fumbling about for a new lead. I looked up the grief-stricken and embittered Glenda, pretending to her that I wanted to avenge her husband's murder, which had cost me $500. Well, I showed her the list of tenants occupying the fifth floor of the building to which Palmer and I had gone to, and only one name. A first name sounded familiar to Glenda. And that first name was Barney. B-A-R-N-E-Y. Barney. Now, it belonged to a man whose full name was Barney Rodescu. R-O-D-E-S-C-U. Who was a lawyer and sort of a man about town. Well, I decided to find out if he was the contact between the crook on the parole board and Jojo Dumont. You know, in a way, Palmer getting bumped off like that kind of put me in a spot. How come? Well, uh, we, uh, we had a little deal together. You see, I figure if Palmer just getting parole like that, he'd know the ropes. Remember me telling you about a pal of mine, Monty Cooper? I wasn't as tight as I seemed that night, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't think you were. You say, uh, Palmer was trying to help you get a parole for Cooper? Well, I didn't exactly say that, but that's the general idea. Go ahead, I can listen while I'm typing. Of course, you, uh, you know I had to pull a little job to get the money for Monty's parole. You mean the uh, Ingersoll robbery? I don't know anybody named Ingersoll. <laughs> no, but the point is, Jojo, I'd, uh, I'd like to get Monty out of the prison as fast as I can. You know, you should have come to me in the first place, Rick. You? Mm-hmm. I'm serious. I like to help my friends. Besides, I, uh, I have a lot of influence in the right places. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll need cash. Yeah, I know. Two thousand dollars. Palmer told me. Did you, uh, did you give Palmer any money? Yeah. Yeah, I gave him five hundred dollars. And for you, here's another thousand. Thanks. I, uh, like to have a receipt. Oh, sure. Where's your receipt? Hey, you know, that's not bad. Of course, it's a little expensive at $1,000 a throw, but it's not bad. And, uh, what about the balance? The balance you get the day money's parole from prison. It's a deal. Well, I guess that about winds up what I have to say. From here on, my future's in your hands. All I ask is that you give me a break. 
You needn't worry about not getting a fair break from this parole board. All right, you may return to your duties, and you'll be informed of our decision later. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. That man should be put away for life. He's an habitual criminal. Why should the state have to support this man for life? That's the wrong attitude. I agree with Mr. Perkins. I'm opposed. The man deserves a chance. Every man deserves a chance. Once again, we seem to be evenly divided. Thus making it my duty to cast a deciding vote. And you vote for Cooper to be parole. I do. Mr. Holliday. It's my privilege. But, Mr. Holliday, it's, it's obvious... It's the chairman's privilege to have his own opinion. The majority votes in favor of Monty Cooper's parole. You'll be released in two weeks to report for work at the Ainsley Farm at Meadows. I move for adjournment. Because I couldn't understand why anyone would give a job to a multiple loser like Monty Cooper, I decided to check the county assessor's records to find out what I could about Vern Ainsley. From the beginning, I had suspected Ralph Holliday of accepting the bribe to put through the parole. But with the information I had now obtained, I felt certain it was Rodescu who had offered the job on the farm to Monty Cooper. Suspecting the setup, however, was not enough. I still had to obtain the proof. That afternoon, I worked out a strategic plan. Commissioner. Commissioner, this is Hendricks. That's right. Hmm? Well, yes, naturally, Commissioner, I'm going out to the Ainsley Farm. Oh, incidentally, I told the boys at the pastime club that I would meet Cooper out at the farm. But, Commissioner, there's, there's just one thing, and I hope you won't let me down on this. You see, unless Cooper is picked up at the prison gates when he's released, if he should happen to come out at the Ainsley Farm at the same time I'm there and get one good look at me, well, I'm afraid my career as Murdoch or Carson or Hendricks will come to a very sudden and painful end. Oh, you have nothing to worry about on that score, Hendricks. I've already notified four states of Cooper's impending parole. They'll be right there to arrest him the minute he steps foot outside the prison gates. Fine, Commissioner. I'll call you tomorrow afternoon. I think by that time I should have this whole set up in the bag. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Ainsley? Hey! You, Ainsley? What do you want? Looking for Monty Cooper. Who? Monty Cooper. He's supposed to be working here. Well, he ain't. Nobody here by the name of Cooper. Now, look, Ainsley, I happen to know that Monty Cooper was paroled to work on this farm. Who told you that? Well, after all, I'm a pal of his. My name is Carson. Rick Carson? Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Carson. Glad to meet a real pal of Monty's, too. You know, confidentially, I put up the dough to spring him. Yeah? Well, I guess you'll be right glad to see each other again. Yeah. Only thing is, I don't expect Cooper much before tomorrow. You see, there ain't no other bus coming this way before midnight tonight. You don't know Monty very well, do you? There ain't no bus, he'll take a taxi. And when he gets here, he'll ask me to pay for it. Well, you're, <laughs> you're welcome to hang around if you want to. I guess the boss won't care. Well, I thought you owned this place. Oh, I sold out a couple of years ago to a fellow named Rodescu, a young lawyer from town. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, does this, uh, this Rodescu, does he come here very often? Mostly weekends. Him and a lady friend. They do a lot of riding. By the way, uh, I'm expecting them this afternoon sometime. Uh, you make yourself the home. I got to get the horses ready. Up to you, Carson. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't figured on Rodesco visiting the farm. 
I realized his presence might have set my plan, but I had to take the gamble. So I waited until Ainsley had disappeared. I had brought along an instrument which the commissioner of police had provided, and taking advantage of Ainsley's absence, I decided to make use of it. I quickly ascertained that no one else was near. I fixed in my mind the details of the room and then found a suitable place in which to conceal the precious instrument. It was the latest type of sound recorder. Once set to operate, it needed no further attention since it would automatically start when someone spoke and stop again when the voice concluded. It could pick up voice frequencies within a radius of 50 feet and could record continuously for four hours. Hello, get me Metropolitan 44244. Hello. Hello, Glenda. Glenda, this is Rick Carson. Oh, yes, Rick. I think I know who's responsible for what happened to your husband. You do? Who is it, Rick? Don't ask any questions now because I've got to act fast. I'll do anything you say. Fine, now listen closely. You know that list of names and addresses of the parole board members that I left with you this morning? Uh, yes, I have it right here. Fine. Now I want you to send each one of them the following telegram. Urgent you meet me at farm without delay. Drop everything else. Have you got that? Yes, Uncle. Uh -huh. Sign each one of those messages, Barney. Barney. But I don't get it, Rick. What good are the telegrams? Well, Glenn, just a minute, Glenda. Okay, Glenda. What do you expect to accomplish by doing this? Look, I can't explain now, but there's just one more thing. When you phone that telegram into Western Union, tell them you're Miss Bruce. She's Rodescu's secretary. I understand. Fine. Now, don't lose any time. When I get back to town, I'll come over and explain everything. Yeah, goodbye. Oh, hey. How about a glass of beer? Oh, no, thanks. Not right now. Well, it's up to you. Yeah. I think I'll kill a little time and drive around the country. I'll stop back later and see if Monty got here yet. Well, suit yourself. Yeah, okay. See you later. Yeah. slated to report to a place called Ainsley's Farm in Meadows. And I gotta go there before I do anything. Well, that's just where we're going. Murdoch's waiting for you there right now. He is? And he's mighty anxious to see you. Well, I'm mighty anxious to see him. Where's your car? Over there. Okay, let's go.
I get such a kick out of this place? So peaceful. Why do you think I keep it, my dear? Uh, Frank, put Miss Dumont's luggage in her room and leave mine in here. Right. I'll take it. Thank you. Darling, it's so good to be with you. Everything's okay. Oh, thank you, Frank. I'll look up Ainsby. He'll have some beer on ice. <laughs> Feel like something to eat? No, thanks. Just a cup of coffee a little later. How about a canter over the countryside? Oh, let's relax for a little while. Later, maybe, huh? Do you think the fellows could put enough punch boards to raise, say, an extra $20,000 in the next few weeks? They might, by putting a little extra pressure on their customers. Then I think they should. A powerful anti-racket committee is being organized to run us, among others, out of business. And a little extra money wisely spent might help considerably. I'll see that Charlie Newton starts him out on it Monday morning. Good. In asking Glenda to send those telegrams to every member of the parole board, I assume that only the one member who was mixed up in the parole conspiracy would know what was meant by the farm and the signature Barney. Well, just at dusk, I had the keen satisfaction of knowing that my plan had worked. I had sent those telegrams in the hope of tricking Ralph Holliday into exposing himself. Holliday was driving that coop. But instead of trapping one member of the parole board, I had caught two. For Titus Jones arrived in the car with my primary suspect. Now I wonder who that can be. Probably one of your eager beaver clients. If it is, I'll throw him out. Excuse me, my dear. I'll make this short and sweet. Come in. Well, this is a surprise. Hello, Ralph. Hello, Hello. Titus. And you gentlemen are quite a ways from home, aren't you? <laughs> You're not joking. How did they burn up the road getting here? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we didn't know. Oh, that's quite all right. Allow me, my dear. Ralph Halliday and Titus Jones. Miss Dumont, my fiancée. How do you do? You're on the parole board. I can uh, finally speak of you. Yes, uh, yes, we are, Miss Dumont. The parole board. Well, yes. sit down, gentlemen. Sit down, make yourselves comfortable. What brings you out here in such a hurry? Why, uh, we came in answer to your telegram. My telegram? I didn't lie you. What's that? You most certainly did. What did you say? Urgent, meet me at farm without delay. Drop everything else. Signed, Barney. Somebody must have got onto our parole board deal. We better clear out. Hold on. Hold on. There's no use running off half cock. You better do a little checking first. I wish you would. How can you? And make it snappy. Hello, operator. Give me Ridgeway 84428. If my secretary is at home, we ought to be able to find out pretty quick. But it's Saturday. She probably has a date. Hello? Hello, Miss Bruce. Um. Did you send any telegrams today to either Titus Jones or Ralph Holliday? You did not. Did you authorize anyone else to do so? You didn't, huh? I knew it was bad news the minute I received that message. Uh, Miss Bruce, I want you to check with Western Union right away and find out if you can who sent those telegrams and to whose account they were charged. Yes, call me back at the farm the moment you have the information. Right. You call me back. Someone's on our trail, Barney. Have you told anybody about giving Holiday and me the money? Oh, don't be an idiot. You don't think I'd tip anybody off that I've been bribing the parole board? Maybe Mr. Holiday or Mr. Jones accidentally. Ridiculous. That's absurd. It could have been that jackass Palmer you were working for you. He only knew the connection between you and me. He knew absolutely nothing of your time with Holiday and Jones. Whatever the answer is, I don't like it. I'm getting away from here. So am I. This farm is poison. Just a minute, gentlemen. We're remaining right here until Miss Bruce calls back. We're safer here than anywhere else for the time being. I was confident the recording machine was doing its work. But to make the record admissible as evidence in court, I would have to swear that I had seen the people inside that room and to identify their voices. 
There was only one way to do this. Who can that be? Where can we hide? Relax, gentlemen. Come in. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm looking for a friend of mine. What makes you think he's here? Well, I was told he would be. My name is Carson. Oh, it's Rick Carson, darling. Let him come in. You needn't worry about him. Come in. Hi, Miss Dilmer. Hello, Rick. So you Rick Carson or Richard Murdoch, hmm? That's right. But I don't think I've had the pleasure. Who's the friend for whom you're looking? His name is Monty Cooper. I was told he was to be paroled today to work on this farm. Uh, this is Mr. Barney Rodescu. Mr. Rodescu? Pleasure, Mr. sir. Mr. Holliday? Mr. Holliday? Hello. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. How do you do? Tell me, Carson. How did you get here? I didn't hear you drive up. Oh, but I didn't drive up. I parked my car down the road. Why? Well, I don't like lengthy explanations, but... You can speak freely, Rick. Well, you see, folks, I'm not exactly on speaking terms with the law. And when I saw a couple of cars parked outside, especially with my friend Monty being wanted in other states, I okay. think... Okay. I guess you're all right, Tom. There's some coffee over there if you want any. Help yourself. Thank you. Hello? Yes, operator. Must be my secretary calling me back. Yes, Miss Bruce. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get that. The telegram was sent to Mr. Holliday, Mrs. Prescott, Titus Jones, the Reverend Adams, and Donald Perkins. That's the entire parole board. This is awful. It isn't good. And just a minute. The telegrams were charged to my account and purportedly telephoned in by Miss Bruce. But when she checked and raised Kane with Western Union, they traced a call back to... What was that number again? Metropolitan 44244. Did you find out whose telephone number that was? You couldn't, huh? Well, keep on checking, Miss Bruce. You know that number. You do? Metropolitan 44244. That's Glenda Palmer's number. Dirty little double crosser. Who does she think she's trying to pull? Something mighty dangerous for all of us, if you ask me. What was that number at your club again? Ellsworth, uh... 36097. What are you calling there for? Get me Ellsworth 36097, please. What are you going to do? You'll see. Hello? Is Newton there? Let me speak to him. Hello? Hello, Dr. Newton. This is Dr. Rodescu. I want you to call on Glenda Palmer. Please, Barney, let's not get in deeper than we are. I want you to give her the same treatment that you gave her husband. Yes, it is a matter of life and death. Thank you, Dr. Newton. Killing Glenda isn't going to help. I'll get rid of her or anybody else who double-crosses me. Yes, that's right. Those states were notified in plenty of time to pick up Cooper on his release from prison. Yet the extradition papers arrived too late to arrest him. Any report on Cooper yet, Captain? Uh, hold it a minute. He was picked up by three men who took him away in a car. After that, there's no report. Well, Cooper must be someplace. We've got to prevent him from reaching the Ainsley farm. Go ahead. I don't like this setup. No trace of Cooper, not a word from Hendricks. He should have contacted us long before this. He seems certain he could wind up this investigation sometime this afternoon. Well, if we don't hear from Hendricks pretty quick now, I suggest contacting that Palmer girl. I don't want that boy to be number three on our list of casualties. That right. Mr. Newton, you've never called on me before. That's why I 
I'm sorry I can't invite you to stay. I was expecting someone. He should have been here before now. Well, it's a shame he's late. Now when he gets here, he won't find you at home. What do you mean? You're going out, Glenda. With me. No, no, I couldn't. I... Well, after all, I told you I'm expecting someone. Get your coat. Please go. Get your coat. <laughs> Suspicion of attempted murder. Yes, Commissioner. Take him out. Everything's all right, Mrs. Palmer. Will you please get the lady a glass of water? Mrs. Palmer, I'm very anxious to get some information about Rick Carson. Now, it's all right. He's working with us. Oh, thank you. Here you are. He said you were helping him. But we're worried that something may have happened. Have you heard from Carson lately? He telephoned me this afternoon from Meadows. Meadows. The Ainsley Farm is located near Meadows. That's right. He mentioned the farm and the telegrams they sent for him. Captain, notify the sheriff's office in Meadows to see if Carson is at the Ainsley Farm. Yes, Commissioner. <laughs> Here. I wonder who that other car belongs to. Never saw it before. Well, we'll say hello and show them you're okay, because then we'll take a run into town. Fair enough. Well, Dr. Newton ought to have finished his treatment of Glenda Palmer by now. Well, quite a you got here. Well, we picked up Cooper, and here he is. Hiya, gang. Well, where's that old son of a gun murder or Carson, whatever he calls himself now? What's the matter, Monty? Did you recognize your old pal? You know, I didn't at first, but I sure do now. You're the guy who shut it out with me and a pal up in Wisconsin. It was you who put a slug to it. You're a federal agent. What did I say? That's right, I am a federal agent. And there's one thing they teach us, and that's how to use a gun. And the first one that makes a move gets it. Oh. I warned you, Mitchell. Anybody else? You see, the reason Cooper knew I was a federal man is because I once put him in prison. The very same prison that you very loyal citizens got him out of today. Looks like I'm going to have to put him back in again. But this time I'm going to give him a lot of company. I'm going to put you all in with him. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid I have to leave you. But I'll make you a promise. I'll be back again. Nice work, Ainsley. Just in time. I heard you shot a figure shot was wrong. Shut up and follow mine. Oh, yeah, Stop the party. Stop it, Put him in the chair. He'll be more comfortable here. Here you are, Carson. There's some water for you. Now speak. All right, Carson. Who put you on our trail? Oh. Well, I suppose we'll have to teach him how to speak. Lesson number one. He's stubborn. He'll need more than that. Ready to talk yet? Hit him again. <laughs> we'll make him talk. Oh, why don't you shoot him and get it over with? Just a minute. We'll try once more. If he doesn't talk this time, 
He'll get a one-way ticket to the bottom of the river. <laughs> All right, Carson. This is your last chance. Tell us just how much you know. You better talk fast and to the point. Sounds like police sirens. It is the police. What can we do? Don't let them find him here. Duke, Blackie, kid. Take Cooper and Carson to the storeroom. Use the back way. Holiday and Jones, you better go along. Come on, boys. Come here. Hurry up. Make it snap. Now, uh, you and I will be taking care of Frank, Jojo. All right. And remember, he was hurt in a hunting accident. Oh, oh shut up. was hurt in a hunting accident. We called a doctor. Oh. Well, we're looking for a man named Carson. Carson? I don't know him. There was someone here earlier today, before you came home, dear. His name is Carson. He said he was looking for a friend. Was his friend named Monty Cooper? That name doesn't mean anything to me either. He was just paroled from prison. He's supposed to report here for work. We haven't seen him. If you have no objections, we'll look through the house. Help yourself. Thank you. Let's look at him, then. Jim, you go up there. Shut up, you one peep and I'll bust your mouth wide open. Gag him, Blackie. Thanks for your cooperation. I hope the doctor gets here soon. Good night. Good night. That setup doesn't look right to me. Yeah, Monty Cooper's supposed to go to work out here, and nobody seems to know anything about him. Kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah. Keep him in there. We'll go around and see what the rest of the boys are doing. We haven't been in here yet. Open it up, mister. All right, boys, look it over. Kind of stuffy in here. Find anything? No sign of Cooper or Carson so far. I'll make a thorough search. See, I told you there ain't nothing in here. Ah, uh, that just about winds it up. Well, if Cooper shows up, I'll be glad to let you know. Okay, let's go, men. I thought sure they had us. What's that? Hey! I'm hey. 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 going back there. Grab that man. Clear that stuff out of him. Take that cabinet away. In here! You stupid fool! Where's your brain? Shut up, Rob, put a slug through you, too. I'd like to do that myself. I didn't like that kisses when I saw him on a parole board. Here they are, Sarge. Good. Mike, take the gas gun. Rob, you take this. Pick up those people in the house. Okay, Sarge. All right, you fellas in there. Come out with your hands up. You want us cover, you'll have to come in and get us. 
I'll listen to me. If you don't come out, we're going to give you a dose of gas. You've got just 30 seconds to make up your mind. Let's give up, boys. We can't beat them. Please, please don't fight. they got gas, and I've got sinus trouble. Don't! That'll cure it. There are too many for us, Virgilia. Yeah, why get ourselves killed? What's the matter with you guys? You all yellow? No, but we're not all fools, either. Come out one at a time with your hands up. I'll count the fire. If you aren't out by then, we'll open up on you. One, two, three, four. All right, you get going. Come on, come on, come on. get going, get going. Move along, come on. Come on, step out of there. Come on, move along, move along. Keep those hands up. Let's see if there's anyone else in there. Right. Mr. Hendricks? Who shot you? Duke Fragili. We better call an ambulance. He's badly hurt. Yeah. Well, give me a hand here. I can't make it. Sure. time I see you, you're going to be a very old man. Oh, yes. Getting along real fine. Now the week or so, I'll be able to go out dancing again. That's wonderful. Here you are, Mr. Hendricks. Oh, thank you, Mary. Oh, well, Mary's my favorite nurse. I can believe that. Now, if it wasn't for her, I'd probably still be lying in bed. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Hendricks. God bless you. Well, here's my completed report, Mr. Whitmore. It took quite a long time to finish it, but I hope it accomplishes what the governor desired. Well, I'm sure it will be, Carson. I mean Murdoch. You mean Hendricks. <laughs> That's right.